Amen. And so tonight, I want to share with you three words. Well, five words. I'm sorry. I can't count for a moment. I want to share with you five words um, that sums up tonight's thoughts. And that is, it's going to work out. Let me correct myself. Six words. <laughs> Let me do it the proper way. It is going to work out. I want to speak that over you again. It is going to work out. Matter of fact, I'm going to keep speaking it until it gets in your spirit. It is going to work out. Ow. Oh, I, we got to say that about three more times. Okay, so just bear with me because I'm getting excited tonight. It is going to work out. Two more times. It is going to work out. Last time, it, whatever that it is, it is going to work out. Open your Bibles real quick and let's go into Romans, the book of Romans. Thank you, Lord. I'm excited about this word. And after we do this, as always, we are going to jump into prayer and, and, and just crying out to the Lord. And we're going to praise God on tonight because this word right here is full of promise. It is going to work out. It is going to work out. Amen. I can shout over that right now that it is going to work out. And so a couple of people just joined in and I'm going to say it a couple times for them. So for those of you who heard it enough times, forgive me, but I got to say it for them too. The, the thought for tonight is it is going to work out. Real simple, right? but it is going to work out. That's what the Lord is speaking to us on tonight. And I'm coming from Romans, the eighth chapter, starting at verse 18. Romans, the eighth chapter, starting at verse 18. And I'm going to read from verse 18 all the way down to verse 31, verse 18, all the way down to verse 31. And by the time we're done with this, and by the time we, before we enter into prayer, this is going to be in your spirit so much that you are going to be rejoicing in the Lord and saying, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, my God. And so Romans 8, starting at verse 18, and it says, for I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. For we are saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. <laughs> For why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the heart knows what the mind of the spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, 
to those who are the called according to his purpose, for whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? What did I start out by saying? It is going to work out. <laughs> it is going to work out. And let me read this over you. And so I know we just read through Romans 8. And y'all know I'm a teacher of the word. And my question always to everyone is now that you read the scripture, what did it say? Right? And oftentimes people pause because so many times we get caught up on how things sound that we really haven't taken the time to say, well, God, what are you saying to me? And so I'm glad you asked the question. I'm going to help you. <laughs> and so we're going to go verse by verse. And it's going to be real quick. It's not going to take long. And so starting at verse 18, what you are going through is nothing in comparison to the glory that you will experience. In other words, what you are going through right now is nothing in comparison, not only the glory you will experience in eternity, but the glory you will experience here on earth. In other words, the end of the story is going to be better than the beginning. The end, the final chapter is going to be, in, you could be on chapter 10 right now, and it could look dismal, it could look dim, it could look horrible, but guess what? By the time you get to chapter 20, what you went through in chapter 10 is going to be worth it because chapter 20 is going to look a whole lot better than chapter 10. That's verse 18. Verse 19, matter of fact, all of creation is rooting for you because when man fell into sin, not only did mankind, mankind suffer from the effects of sin, but creation itself is suffering from sin right now. Why do you think we got all this chaos happening in the world? It's an after effect of sin. And so verse 19 says, even creation is rooting for you. <laughs> verse 20 to 22 says, because even creation will be delivered once all of God's children truly understand who they are. Once you really understand who you are, what's on the inside of you, and who you serve, creation also will be delivered. Verse 23, even as we groan because of what we're going through, we're not alone. The Holy Spirit who is in you he who was in you and because you have the fruit of the spirit on the inside of you you're not there's no way that you can that you can um fail this thing there's no way that you can quit there's no way that you can give up because you have the greatest cheerleader that anyone could ever have and he's on the inside of you verse 24 so don't give up don't lose hope just like you had hope in salvation you need to have hope in the Lord right now. That same hope that you experienced when you gave your life to Christ is the same kind of hope that you need. You didn't know what was going to face you, but you trusted in God. You didn't know what was going to happen, but you trusted in God. That is the same kind of hope that you need right now. Verse 25, eagerly wait for what you do not see. We can pause right there eagerly wait for the things that you do not see and don't just wait an ordinary wait you have to persevere in other words as you are waiting you cannot give up no matter how long you've been waiting if you've been waiting for one year two years five years ten years two months three months six months however long you have been waiting you cannot give up and the clincher to it is that you can't give up no matter how long you've been waiting and no matter how you feel. <laughs> you cannot give up no matter how long you've been waiting and how, how you feel. Verse 26, because 
you can persevere again. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is in you. And not only does the Holy Spirit help you, but the Holy Spirit intercedes for you. An intercessor is one that is standing in a gap for you. An intercessor is, the, is one who is praying for you, who is praying for you when you are weak, who is praying for you when you don't understand, who is praying for you when things don't make sense, who's praying for you when you feel like, God, what is going on in this world? The Holy Spirit is interceding for you. And because of that as well, you cannot fail. <laughs> Verse 27, and here's the thing, pay attention to verse 27. He's not just interceding according to what we want. No, 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 no. That's not what the scripture says. The, script, the scripture says that he's interceding according to God's will. And so if the Holy Spirit is interceding according to his will, that means that what he is praying will come to pass because that is his will for my life. <laughs> it's his will for my life. And so he is praying what he has declared in the heavens. He is praying what he has ordained in my life. He is praying what he has spoken over me. Verse 28. So because of that, because of the glory, because of the hope, because of the expectation, because of the eagerness, because of the waiting, because of the perseverance, everything is going to work out for my good. Why? Because I love him and I'm called according to his purpose. Because I love him and because I am called, it seals it. Everything is going to work together for my good. It doesn't matter what it is. It's going to work out for my good. It doesn't matter if it looks like hell. It's going to look like heaven eventually. It doesn't matter what it feels like. It's going to work out for your good. Verse 29. Now, why is it going to work out for your good? It's not just because you love him. It's not just because you are called. But actually, it's, it's greater than that. Verse 29 says that because he foreknew you. When you were in your mother's womb, he knew you before all of that, before your mom knew you, before you were even a thought in your parents' mind, before they even named you, the Lord knew you. Not only that, but he predestined you. He decided that your destiny would be one of glory. He decided that your destiny would be one of greatness. He decided that your, your destiny would be one where you would not fail. He decided that your destiny would be one that you would make it all the way to the end. Not only did he predestine you, but he also conformed you. He's decided that you're going to become like Christ. And so, yes, he allows you to go through all these situations because every situation is making you more like Christ. He's made it up in his mind. God has chosen you for this. And so when we look at this passage of scripture, we can say, God, I know it's going to work out because you chose me for this. God, because you called me. God, because you selected me. God, because you predestined me. It's going to work out for me. And what does verse 30 say? And because he predestined me, he called me. <laughs> he justified me. And so no, I'm not perfect, but I'm justified because of the blood of Jesus. No, I have not done everything right, but because of Jesus, I am justified and he will glorify me. It's going to work out. Why? Because God planned it that way. <laughs> it's going, it has no choice but to respond to God's will. It has no choice. The situation has no choice but to respond because God planned it that way. So you mean even when we make mistakes, it'll work out? I believe that God's plan is great enough. It is large enough. It is so gigantic that even when we mess up, God knew we were going to mess up. He knew we were going to repent. He knew we were going to turn back to him and he worked all of that into his plan. And so we may look at our lives and we say, Lord, I screwed up and God, I wasted this and God, I messed this up. But God is like, listen, I grafted that all in because I foreknew you. I predestined you. I knew what you were going to do before you knew what you were going to do. And so from our vantage point, it looks like failure. But from God's vantage point, it looks like simply a setup 
for the destiny that he has predestined in our lives to come to pass. And so it's going to work out. It's going to work out, woman of God, whatever it is. I don't know what it is. I don't know what you're facing. I don't know what you're going through. But in this season, all of us are going through something, but it is going to work out for you. Do you hear that in your spirit? It has no choice but to work out. It has to work out because God has declared it to be so, because he has called you, because he has chosen you. So it has to work out. It can't, it can't do anything else but work out because God has declared it. And so where are you today? <laughs> Where's your expectation? Where's your hope? Where's your desire? Hey, God, hey. Ooh, where's your perseverance? Are you weak today? Are you struggling? Are you overwhelmed? Are you burdened? Oh my goodness. God has called you for such a time as this and God has purposed you. And because of that, every situation is going to work out. It may not work out how you think it will, but it's going to work out. It may not work out when you think it will, but it's gonna work out. <laughs> it may not work out the way you think, we think in our minds, why? Because his thoughts are not like ours, his ways are not like ours. He don't even think like us. <laughs> um, he don't even see like we see. It's completely, totally different. And so because of that, <laughs> because God is not a man, thank you, Lord, that he should lie. He cannot lie. He cannot go against his word because God is not a man that he should lie. Hmm. Nor the son of man that he need repent. He doesn't lie. He doesn't repent. But every single thing he speaks, every single thing he promises, every thing, single thing he speaks over our lives, it comes to pass. The Bible lets us know in Isaiah that the word of God just like is just as faithful as the water that comes out of the sky and waters the earth is just as faithful. God's word will never fail. In fact, the Bible says that his word shall go forth and it shall accomplish every single thing that it has been sent to do. Thank you, God. Every word that God has spoken over you, it will accomplish what it has sent. Everything that God has intended for your life, it shall come to pass. Everything that God has planned for your life, it shall come to pass. Everything God has predestined you for, it shall come to pass. Everything God has called you for, it shall come to pass. Everything God has purposed, everything he has planned, everything he has orchestrated, everything he has put together, the Lord speaks to you tonight and reminds you that it will come to pass. It does not matter what it looks like right now. It does not matter what it feels like right now. It doesn't even matter what it sounds like right now. All you need to do is hold to what God has spoken over your life. All you need to do is hold on to every promise, everything that he has whispered to you when you were praying, everything he whispered to you when you were on your knees crying out to him, every scripture or promise he put on your heart, whatever he has spoken to you, woman of God, all you have to do is hold on to it. And you must keep your hope in the Lord, just like you put your hope in Christ for salvation. Put your hope in the Lord that he will fulfill every single thing that he promised. Why? Because he is the one that initiated it. He is the one that promised it. He is the one that planned it. He is the one that ordained it. You didn't do it. You didn't put, to, put it together. You didn't come up with it, but it was the Lord who chose you for that. It was the Lord who called you out of darkness. It was the Lord who brought you into his marvelous light. It was the Lord who saved you. It was the Lord who cleansed, who cleansed you. It was the Lord who rescued you out of darkness. It was the Lord who did it in your life. And because God initiated it, he is faithful to fulfill every single thing he has initiated in your life. God is not a God that starts something and quits in between, but he is a God that starts it and he is faithful 
to complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Everything that he has started, he who begun a good work in you is faithful to complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. He who begun a good work in you will complete every single thing that he has started. Every single thing that he has whispered to you, he will complete it. He will complete it. I pray tonight that you would open your heart and you would receive the word of the Lord in this moment that God will complete every single thing that he begun in you. God is not a God that he tells you something and he drops it. God is not a God that whispers something to you and then he forgets about it. But no, every single thing he is faithful to watch over. And scripture says he watches over it. He watches over his word until it, com it completes what it has been set to do. He watches it and he guides it and he leads you you are god's spoken word and so father tonight we come to you god we are your daughters we come god thanking you god we thank you that you have promised us some great things god we thank you that you have a plan for us god we thank you that you have a purpose for us god we thank you that you have not forgotten us god we thank you that you see us and you know us God, we thank you that you know every single thing there is to know about us, oh God. God, you foreknew us. You have chosen us for this season. You have chosen us for this time. God, when you saved us, you had a purpose in mind. God, when you saved us, you knew exactly what would happen next in our lives. God, you knew exactly the direction we would go in. God, even when we made mistakes, oh God, you knew we would make those mistakes. God, even when we sinned against you, God, you knew we would sin against you. God, even when we went in the wrong direction, God, you knew we would go in the wrong direction. But God, we thank you tonight that it was you who, not, who did not leave us in that place. God, we thank you that you are the one you didn't leave us in our mess. But God, you set people in our lives. You spoke to us. You, you led us to your word. God, your spirit led us, God. And you guided us into your truth. You guided us back to you, God. God, you ordered our steps. God, it wasn't us. God, it wasn't our thinking. It wasn't our strategy. God, it wasn't us. But God, it was your goodness. God, it was your faithfulness. God, it was your word coming to pass that goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. God, it was your word that you have spoken over us come to pass. And so God, tonight we thank you. God, that you foreknew us. God, we thank you that you predestined us. God, we thank you, God, that you chose us, that you called us. God, that you justified us. And God, we are so grateful because you will glorify us. God, we know tonight more than we ever known before. God, that everything we are going through in this season of our lives, it will work out for our good. It is working together for our good even now, God. Even if we cannot understand it, even if we can't even put it together in our minds, even if it doesn't make any sense to us. God, we thank you that you are using every single thing for our good. God, you're using not just our successes, but God, you're using our messed up our trips, our falls, our failures. God, you're using it all for our good. God, for in those seasons, God, you gave us a testimony. And God, we can only know of your goodness if we've gone through hardship. God, we can only know of your power if we've encountered weakness. Oh God, we can only know that you are a way maker if we were lost. And so God, tonight we say thank you. Oh God, thank you for choosing us. God, thank you for calling us. God, thank you for saving us. God, thank you for washing us. God, thank you for cleansing us. God, thank you, oh God. We give your name all the glory. We give your name all the honor, God. We give your name all the praise. For you are worthy, oh God. You're worthy of it all. God, there is no one like you, Jehovah. There is no one like you. Oh God, we worship you. God, we magnify you. We exalt you name. And so God, help us, help us, Holy Spirit, that we would not grow weary in well-doing. Help us, Holy Spirit, that we would not quit. Help us, Holy Spirit, to persevere. Help us, Holy Spirit, to keep hoping even when we don't see. Help us, 
us to keep hoping even when we don't understand. Help us to keep hoping even when doubt is flooding our minds. But we thank you, Holy Spirit, that even now as we're in your presence, that you are washing us and you are cleansing us. And so God, remove from us all unbelief. God, remove from us all doubt. God, remove from us all, we all worried. God, remove from us the weariness and the weakness. And God, we pray that your Holy Ghost power would come upon us tonight. And God, that we would rise up in newness of strength, oh God. God, we pray that you would rain down upon us, Lord. God, that you would refresh us, God, and that you revive us. And God, that you remind us of every single word that you have spoken over our lives, God. God, that we would not lose sight of what you have declared. We would not lose sight of what you have spoken. But God, we will believe every single thing that you have spoken over our lives. God, it doesn't matter how old we are. God, what you said will come to pass. God, we can be 75 years old, but God, have you spoken, it shall surely come to pass. God, I pray that you would open the eyes of our understanding that we might see. God, if in any way we have limited you, God, forgive us. God, if in any way, Lord, we have hindered, God, your word from coming to pass, God, forgive us. But God, we thank you that you are bigger than even our mess ups. We thank you that you are greater than all of that, God. And so help us, Lord to remain in step with you. Help us, oh God, to follow your leading. Help us, oh God, to follow your direction. Help us, oh God, to follow your prodding, oh God. Help us, God, to obey you at every turn that whatever you speak to our hearts, we would say yes to your will and yes to your way. God, whatever you tell us to do, we would say yes and we would obey. God, whatever you speak to us in the midnight hour, God, I pray, Lord, even God, when it's inconvenient, we would rise up, oh God, and say yes unto you. For God, we know, God, that you will get the glory in every situation in our lives. God, for you have the final say. And so, God, we can stand still and know that you are God. God, we can stand still and see your salvation. God, we can stand still, for we know that the battle has already been won. God, all you require for us is to walk by faith. And so, God, we cry out tonight, Lord, and we say, help us, oh God, to walk by faith and not by sight. Help us, oh God, to hold fast to your word. Help us, oh God, to keep walking, God, no matter what it looks like. Help us, God, to keep going forward, no matter what it seems in the natural. God, give us our supernatural eyes, God, that we wouldn't even see in the natural. God, we wouldn't see our situations according to natural eyes, but God, we would see our situation according to your eyes, God. Help us to see, oh God, your supernatural hand at work in each and every one of our lives, God. God, I thank you that even though, God, some of us are waiting on you, God, to move in our situation. God, I thank you that you are faithful, God, that even as we are waiting, you are strengthening us. God, even as we are waiting, you are maturing us. Even as we are waiting, you are building us. Even as we are waiting, God, you are doing the work in each and every one of our hearts. And so, God, even as we wait on you, God, that season of waiting is not in vain. God, even as we wait on you, that season is not a waste. But God, we thank you that you will use every season of our lives for your glory. God, we thank you that every month, every moment, every minute of our lives will mean something, oh God. God, we thank you that you are using everything. And so God, I pray in the name of Jesus. God, that you would teach us how to make the most of the time that you have given us. Oh, God, I thank you. God, I pray that you will cause for us to be radically obedient. God, that we would radically obey you in this season of our lives. God, that whatever you ask us to do, God, that we would do it. For God, we want to do all that you have called us to do. God, we want to be all that you want us to be. God, even if it does not make sense to us. God, I pray that we would radically obey you. God, God, not just obeying you, God, to the level of what people expect of us, but God, obeying you at the level that you are speaking to our hearts. God, for each and every one of us, God, there is a standard you have for our lives. And God, that standard may not look like our brother or our sister, but God, that standard is Jesus Christ. And so, God, I pray that each and every one of us, God, would measure up to the standard that you have placed in our lives. God, in this season, God, you are speaking to our hearts about greater discipline. God, I pray that we would take heed to what you are speaking to us in this season. And God, that we will put those 
those things in practice. God, I thank you that in this season, you have been giving your daughters instruction. God, you've been instructing us in the midnight hour. God, you've been giving us strategy in the midnight hour. God, I thank you even now that you are God who's been speaking to us. And God, I pray that we, your daughters, would not take that for granted, but God, that we would put to work every single thing that you have spoken unto us. God, you have shown us some things in this season. Thank you, Lord. God, prior to this season, so many of us, God, were asking you, God, help. God, show me how to have balance. God, show me how to do this. God, show me how to do that. But God, I thank you. I hear you, Lord. God, that in this season, you have been showing us how. And so, God, I pray tonight that you would give us ears to hear. And God, that you would give us eyes to see. Oh, God, that we would hear in the spirit like never before. Oh, God, I pray that we would know your voice above everyone else's voice. God, that we would know your voice above even our own voice. God, I pray that we would not confuse your voice with our emotions. We would not confuse your voice with our flesh and our will and our desires. But God, I pray that we would clearly be able to distinguish, God, between your voice, God, our voice, the voice of the enemy and the voice of others. Oh God, I pray that we would be like sheep that hear your voice and we only follow after your voice. Oh God, in this season, God, we will be called to do things, God, and other people may not agree. But God, I I pray in the name of Jesus, God, that we would keep our face fixed on you. God, that we would walk towards you, God, not looking to the left or to the right, not looking for validation, God, from others, our family or our friends. But God, I pray that our validation would only come from you. God, you are calling many of us to make some hard decisions in this season. God, I thank you. You are the one that is leading. You are the one that is guiding. God, I pray that we won't doubt when you speak to us. But God, God, when you speak to us, our response will be yay and amen. God, that we would say yes to your will and yes to your way, God. God, many of us, God, you may speak to our hearts and you may say submit and surrender. God, I pray that when you speak to us, that to us, God, that we would just do so. God, I thank you that walking in your way, God, is not about us getting our own way. God, it's all about surrendering to what you desire for our lives. And so, God, I pray tonight for greater surrender in every single one of us, God, that we would surrender to your will, God. God, we would surrender to your way. God, we would surrender to whatever it is that you are speaking to us even now. God, I thank you, Lord. God, that there are those, God, I keep hearing you, Lord, that there are those you are telling them, God, to do things that they do not want to do. God, I thank you that your word says that you are looking for us, God, to be willing and obedient. God, I pray that you would give us a willing and obedient heart. God, that we wouldn't just do things for you begrudgingly or just doing it because we feel obligated or forced. But God, I pray out of the depths of our hearts, there would be a willingness in us, God, to do whatever you are speaking to us in this season. God, I pray that our desire for you would be greater than our desire for anything else. God, that we would want you more than anything else. We would want you more than anything else, God. We would desire your will more than anything else, God. God, I pray, oh Lord, that we would seek after you with all of our heart. We would seek after you with all of our might. We would seek after you with all of our soul, God. Oh God, I pray that we would be like that athlete, go God. Oh Lord, who is disciplining their flesh, not allowing their flesh to take control, and that we would run this race, so oh God, as if we are running for a prize. And so, Lord, I pray right now, God, that we would all put on our spiritual running shoes. And God, that we would run after you with all of our might. We would run after you with all of our strength. Oh, God, for your word even tells us, God, that if we seek we seek after you with all of our heart, all of our might, all of our strength. God, that you will be found by us. God, there are so many things that we desire in this life, and you are the one that has the power to bring it to pass. God, it's not our job. It's not our loved ones. But you are the one who has the power to bring it to pass. And so, God, tonight we declare that we will seek after you with all of our heart, all of our might, all of our strength. Oh, God, for we know when we seek after your kingdom and your righteousness, everything we stand in need of shall be added unto us. And so, God, we thank you. God, that everything that we are going 
nothing will work out. God, we thank you that every situation will work out. We thank you that every difficulty will work out. God, as long as we trust in you, as long as we put our faith in you, as long as we abide in you, God, as long as we remain connected to you, God, we thank you that everything in this life will work out according to your will. Let us desire your will, God. Let us desire your way, God, your will above ours, your way above ours, your wants above ours, your desires above ours. God, even tonight, God, we surrender, God. We surrender our will to yours. We give up control over every aspect of our lives. Thank you, Lord. God, we give up control over our decision making. Thank you, God. God, I thank you that you want to be Lord over our decisions. God, you want to be Lord over the decisions we make in our lives. God, I pray that we would do as your word says, God, that we would trust in the Lord with all of our heart. God, that we would not lean to our own understanding. God, help us to acknowledge you. Oh God, to, to acknowledge you in all of our ways, to seek you in all of our ways, to come to you in all of our ways, in every area of our lives. God, help us, oh God, to acknowledge you and to seek you. And God, we know that you will direct our path, oh God. And so Lord, we thank you tonight, God. We don't even have to ask you to direct our path because that is your desire for us. Your desire for us is to lead us. Your desire for us is to guide us. Your desire for us is to show us the way that we want, that you want us to go. Help us, God, to listen and obey. Help us, God, to hear, oh God, even when it's uncomfortable. Help us, oh God, to receive, even when we don't want to receive it, God. Help us, oh God, to humbly obey. God, we humble ourselves in your presence in this moment. God, we, we, we tear down pride. We tear down haughtiness. God, we tear down every lofty opinion of ourselves. We tear all those things down in your presence, oh God, and we humble ourselves. For God, we are nothing without you. We only exist because of you. We only breathe because of you. We're nothing in our own strength and our own ability. For God, it's in you that we live, we move, and we have our being. And so, oh God, we bless your name, God. Oh God, we honor you, 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 God. Oh God, we honor you, we honor you, we honor you, Lord Jesus. Oh glory, 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 God. Oh glory to your name, Lord God. Glory to your name, Jesus. Glory to your name, God. Glory to you, hey God, glory to your name. You're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy, God. You're worthy, God, you're worthy, God. You're worthy, God, you're worthy, God. You're worthy, God. You're worthy, God. You're so worthy of all the glory. You're worthy of all the honor. You're worthy of all the praise. You're so worthy. Oh God, you're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy. Oh, my God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. Woman of God, the Lord just wants a greater surrender from all of us. And so wherever you are in your walk with the Lord, the Lord just wants a greater surrender, greater than how you surrendered on yesterday. God wants a greater surrender right now, a greater surrender, a yielding over in every area of your life. Thank you, God, a yielding, a, a, a bowing down, a letting go, a, a, a saying, God, you can have it. God, whatever you want, God, whatever you desire, God desires that from us on tonight. He wants us to yield. He wants us to surrender. His plans are his plans. He, you hear that? His plans are his plans. They're not our plans. His plans for us are his plans for us. And he's going to do it in his way. He's going to do it in his timing. Thank you, God. He's going to do it how he wants to do it. Oh, God, I thank you. He's going to do it when he wants to do it. But we just have to surrender. We just have to surrender. Thank you, God. We just have to surrender. You, we just have to surrender. And so I don't know about you tonight. 
but my response unto the Lord is yes, Lord. And so if you want to join me in saying, God, I hear what you are speaking in the spirit. And I say yes to you, God, whatever you are asking of me, you can unmute yourself and you can join me and crying out, yes, Lord. You can unmute yourself and just cry out, yes, Lord, whatever you desire. Yes, Lord, whatever you want. Yes, Lord, whatever you are asking. Yes, Lord, whatever yes, you are saying. Yes, Lord, whatever you want to do. Yes, Lord, I surrender. Lord, I surrender. Yes, 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 Lord, I surrender. It is to you that I give the praise, oh God. I surrender. Yes. Let your will be done. Ask God. 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 Let your will be done, Lord. Have your way, O God, because I'm nothing will be done. It belongs to you that. Yes, Everybody is here. Love you, Lord. Thank you, God. We thank you, Lord. Oh, oh, yeah. God, we say yes. Soul oh, says yes. Yeah. Yes, God. We say yes. Mm. We say yes. Yes, God. Yes. We say yes. Oh, My yes. very soul said. Yes. Glory to your name. Glory to you, oh, Lord. 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 To you, Lord. Glory mm. to your name, God. Thank you. I want you to hear this. As I stated, as the Lord was just leading in our time of prayer, that remember God's plan is God's plan. Oftentimes, we make the mistake to think that we have to bring God's plan to pass. That we're the ones that have to make it happen. <laughs> we have to do certain things, but so simple, right? But so powerful. God's plan is God's plan. And anytime you make a plan, anytime I make a plan, I have accounted for all the things in it, right? When I make a plan, I account for the various demands on my life. I account for my schedule. 
I account for responsibilities. I even account for situations that may be happening in my life, right? If I plan, let's say, to go on vacation, I look at the calendar and I'm thinking about, is this a good time or is this not a good time? I'm thinking, I'm thinking about finances. I'm thinking about so many things. And so if we do that in the natural, when we are planning, how much more does God do for us? His plan is already fixed for our lives. And he has accounted, thank you, Lord, for every season of your life. He has accounted for every hardship. He has accounted for every mishap, mistake, fall. He has accounted for every, he has accounted for every difficult season. He has accounted for all your responsibilities, all your challenges. What God wants us to do is simply walk by faith. And now it's easier said than done. I get it. I know it for myself. It's easier said than done. But what we are required to do as women of faith is to walk by faith. And what does that mean? Walking by faith simply means not only do we believe, but we do whatever God speaks to us to do in that season, whether it makes sense to us, whether we know how it's going to work out. Why? Because we are walking by faith. And I believe that every mile we walk with the Lord by faith is leading us to that grand plan that the Lord has already laid out for our lives. Remember, as the scripture said, as we read on tonight from Romans 18 to verse 31, and if you had the time, you, we, we could go on and read the entire chapter. But remember what verse um, 29 and verse 30 says, for whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. <laughs> God's plan has accounted for all the dilemmas in your life. Relax, chill. <laughs> God has accounted for all of it. He knew where you would be on June 11th, 2020. He knew what you would have. He knew the state of your mind. He knew the state of your life. He knew the affairs of everything that you were handling. He knew all of that. He foreknew you. He predestined you, he called you, he chose you. And so my prayer is that you would remember tonight that God is for you. Remember everything that was shared on tonight and that the Holy Spirit is interceding for you. The Holy Spirit is on the inside of you. Matter of fact, all of creation is rooting for you. If you ever think that you are alone, just look at the tree. The tree is like, if you would just get your act together, <laughs> the tree is looking at you like, would you just surrender to the Lord? I mean, geez. <laughs> I mean, you know, all of creation is moaning and groaning and waiting for the revealing of the sons of God. That term son has nothing to do with gender. That has everything to do with relationship to the Lord. We have been made sons of God. We have been grafted in. We have been adopted. And then I know that's a whole nother subject, but we have been adopted. That's what that term sonship means. It means adopting someone as your own who once was not your own. Oh God, I thank you. Sonship means that I could have, I could find a child out in the street, but if I have adopted you and made you mine, that's becoming, that's sonship. I've given you the same rights. I've given you the same access. I've given you the same, all that anyone that naturally came from me, I gave all the same stuff to you. We've been grafted in as sons of God, but because we all don't understand that, modern translations say children of God. So if you feel better, we've all been made children of God. 
So we have been adopted. We have been grafted in. Hey, God, I thank you. Oh, glory to your name, God. Oh, God, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you, Lord. Oh, and so I'm excited for you. It's going to work out. <laughs> it's going to work out. That's what we started out by saying tonight. It's going to work out. It's going to work out. And so I am going to pray for you real quick. Pray for you real quick that you would move forward by faith and you would obey the Lord. And then a quick announcement, and then we're going to say goodnight. <laughs> Amen. And so, Father in heaven, I thank you for every woman that has come on here tonight. God, a, a couple have come on here for the first time. There are others who are here um, every Thursday. God, I thank you for their faithfulness. God, I thank you for their heart towards you. God, I thank you for their desires towards you. God, I thank you that they are hungry for you, God. And I thank you, Lord, that every time we come here on a Thursday night, God, that you meet us. God, we don't take your presence for granted. We are so grateful that every time we encounter your presence, we thank you, God, that you speak to us and that you encourage us in your word. God, I pray that everyone that came on and those who will listen in on the replay. God, I pray that you would encourage their hearts. God, that they would know that you are for them and that if you are for them, who can be against them? God, I pray that they would know God with absolutely no doubt, absolutely no reservation. God, that you have purposed them for greatness, that you have a plan for their lives. God, I cast off of them shame and condemnation that would even try to convince them that it will not happen. Satan, the Lord God rebukes you, but every single one of us, we shall have what God says we will have, and we shall be who God says we are. God, I thank you tonight for your hand that is upon every single woman. God, I thank you that you know her frame. You even know her struggle right now, but you are a God who equips us in the midst of our struggle. And so, God, I pray that you would give her everything that she needs, that she would walk forward in faith, that she would walk forward by faith, that she would walk forward trusting in you, believing in you, holding fast to your word, God. God, I pray that none of us would doubt that whatever you have spoken over our lives, it will surely come to pass. God, I pray that we would believe it no matter what it looks like, no matter what it sounds like, no matter what it feels like. God, that we would hold you to your word for you do not lie. That is not in your character. That is not in your DNA. God, you are faithful and you are true. You are holy. There is no spot, no blemish, no error in you. You cannot lie. It is against the very nature of who you are. And so God, I pray that we would remember who you are and we would remember what you have spoken to us. God, I pray that we would not faint. God, we would not grow weary. We would not give up. But God, that we would persevere. God, that we would hope in you. We would trust in you. We would believe in you. We would put our faith in you, God. And Lord, whatever your daughters are standing in need of, God, I thank you that by faith, their needs are already supplied according to your riches and glory. So God, financial needs, I pray some provision over their lives, God. God, physical needs, God, I speak healing over their lives. God needs in their family. God, I speak your provision. Whatever the needs are, God, tangible, emotional, spiritual, whatever those needs are, God, I pray that you would meet it. God, those who are lonely, those who desire relationship, not just a, a romantic, but God, they just desire companionship. God, I pray that you would surround them with like-minded believers who would encourage them and strengthen them in the Lord. God, that they would build one another up in the most holy faith. And so God, I thank you for every single one of us tonight. God, I pray that you would increase every single woman. You would enlarge them. You would bless them. You would keep them. You would strengthen them. You would heal them. You would encourage them, God. God, you would bless every single area of the, let not one area of their life go untouched by you. Touch every single area of their life. Where there's confusion, God, bring order. God, where there is chaos, bring peace. God, where there is sickness, bring healing. God, bring everything together for God you are causing everything to work together for our good because we love you God and you have called us <laughs> according to your purpose and so God I pray that every single one of us would have a great night's rest God we will not lose anything because we stayed up night praising you but God instead we would have gained much 
because we have sacrificed to come away and be with you. And God, I pray that you, if it be your will, God, that every single one of us, God, we will come together again on next Thursday. God, I pray that you would spread the word to other women who needs to be encouraged, other women, God, who need community of believers. God, I pray that you would send those, oh God, who are in need, God, of encouragement through your word and through prayer. God, let us not be people who hold stuff to ourselves, but help us to go forth and share the good news of Jesus Christ to every single one that we encounter. We thank you tonight. We honor you. We bless your name. We praise your name, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. And before you go, I want to give a shout out to Sister Sheree. She has started her blog. Um, it is called Woman to Woman. Remember, Daybreak Women, we are praying ourselves through <laughs> that we move forward in what God has called us to do. And so, Sheree, I salute you. I congratulate you. Ladies, can we say congratulations to this woman of God? Let's encourage her to congratulations. get Congratulations. Congratulations, sis. Congratulations. Yay. Thank you. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. It takes a lot to move forward with what God yeah, has placed in your heart. But don't quit, yeah. Sheree. Keep going forward. Do it. Whatever God places in your heart, do it. And every one of you on this line, listen, we're on here to encourage one another to move forward with whatever God has placed in our heart. God has called you. He's chosen you. He's predestined you. Go to bed. <laughs> Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, sisters. What?